questions from Mike, if you want to kick us off with the first two, please. You're on mute, Mike. Sorry, if you can unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Diogo, uh, almost 12 months since you uh, joined Liverpool. Uh, what's it been like for you at Anfield and, and how much has it lived up to, to your expectations and, uh, and what you were hoping to achieve in your first 12 months? Well, uh, 12 months, like you said, uh, it's already a mark. Uh, I think uh, playing for this amazing club with uh, such um, surroundings like Anfield, uh, so much support all over the world, it, it's special. And uh, in the end, um, all we players... Um, uh, want to provide to, those, to to every people it's to to win football matches and to win competitions so uh, we are in the starting of a new season and uh, we will go for everything yeah how much do you think you've learned during the last 12 months and, uh, and how much have you improved as a player do you, do you think because the fans absolutely adore you Jurgen Klopp uh, has told us on many occasions what you bring to the team well, uh, I think um, I always try to, to do my best uh, in terms of uh, being on the pitch, being able to, to help the teammates. That's all, all, always what I, I try to do. And I think playing uh, under, under Jürgen and with this uh, team, it helped me as well because we played a lot of attacking football. And me being an attacking player, I, I take advantage of that because I'm always uh, around the goal. OK, we'll go to Ian from TalkSport, please. Hi, Jogo. How are you? Hello. Um, you've been talking about your, your first year at Liverpool. You obviously have a massive history in the Champions League. And I guess that with the fans back now, you'd love that history to continue going forward and, and have more success in the competition. Yeah, I think uh, I, I had the opportunity to, 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 to see how it is to play in a, a full Anfield in a European night. I think it was massive for me. It was my first experience. Um, I knew um, it was going to be, but when you are really there, that's when you really learn. And uh, I think AC Milan, mainly first half, uh, although they were winning, I don't know how, but uh, we did a fantastic first half and um, the fans there, uh, they really push push us and they are really useful to our style of uh, game. OK, we'll go to Carl Markham from PA, please. Hi, Jono. Hello. Hi, just wondering, um, when, you, when you arrive at the club and you've got Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino as the established front three, what, what are you thinking in terms of you know, getting into the team? Well, I, I obviously I knew they were one of uh, the best trios, attacking trios in the world. But I never thought about coming and take anyone's place. I thought about come to come and to give my best in trainings and in games, and then it's up to to the manager to decide. Uh, I think it is always useful when you have those kind of players to help you because in the end, what we want is is to win, and uh, only if you have. Uh, good players, you are able to, to do that. Okay, Paul Joyce from Times Next, please. Hi. Um, you will know more than a lot of people about the Porto mindset, having played for the club. Will they be hurt by the past two experiences of Liverpool winning so well in Estadio de Dragao? Will, will they be hurting still? <sighs> Well, it's it's hard to say. I think um, uh, me, not only me, but I, I follow Port obviously, and I know that those results uh, weren't um, good for Port, and they didn't show um, the the real difference between the teams. And mainly playing at Dragon is never easy for the away team. So I know that if we uh, let ourselves um, go there and thinking about those results will be struggling. Okay, we've got time for a couple more questions. If we go to Nuno Barbosa, please. Boa tarde, Diogo. Nuno Barbosa, Jornal Record. Good afternoon, Diogo. Afternoon. We'll, we'll speak in Portuguese. I think it's possible here. Diogo, yeah. <laughs> começava por perguntar como é que perspectivas o teu estádio de Dragão? What do you expect on your return to the Dragão? What will it be like? No, no. 
We spoke about, or did you talk about this the last time you were together with the national team and the Porto players there, Otavio, Pep, Diego Costa? Did you talk about this upcoming game? I'm not sure. I think round about that time, had, had the draw been made? I can't remember if the draw had been made at that time. I can't remember the dates off by heart, but I don't remember having spoke specifically about this game. I think in the next international break, we'll definitely have the opportunity to talk about this game that's going to happen tomorrow. In terms of the expectation, it'll be a very difficult game. I know how difficult it is for an away team to come play at the drag Dragon. And I've also uh, told my teammates about this difficulty. Boa tarde, Diogo. Alexandre Matos. Boa tarde, Diogo. Apesar do, do Porto não ter ganho a Liga Portuguesa na. Even though Porto didn't win the Championship last year, they had a very good Champions League uh, campaign. They were better than Chelsea for a long time and they beat Juventus. Sergio Conceição's team has shown us on numerous occasions that they are they raise their game uh, in teams that have possession. That could be the case in the game against Liverpool. Taking all this into account, what do you think the Porto you're going to come up against tomorrow? Will they be more an expressive team than the team that lost by a lot in Portugal previously? Or would it be more like the team that almost knocked out uh, Chelsea last season? I would say that it will be closer to the team that came up against Chelsea. Obviously, Porto's objective in the game, it lost to Liverpool. They intended to give us a difficult game to Liverpool, but that's football. Sometimes we can, can't impose our game plan, sometimes we can, but I'm sure it will be a tough game tomorrow.